Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our English class. Today, I am going to tell you the story, Pliant Like the Bamboo, by Ismael V. Maliari. Are you ready to listen? Then, let's begin. There is a story in Philippine folklore about a mango tree and a bamboo tree. Not being able to agree as to which was strongest of the two, they called upon the wind to make the decision. The winds blew its hardest. The mango tree stood fast. It would not yield. It knew it was strong and sturdy. It would not sway. It was too proud. It was too sure of itself. But finally, its roots gave way and it tumbled down. The bamboo tree was wiser. It knew it was not as robust as the mango tree. And so every time the wind blew, it bent its head gracefully. It made loud protests, but it let the winds have its way. When finally, the wind got tired of blowing, the bamboo tree still stood in all its beauty and grace. The Filipino is like the bamboo. He knows that he is not strong enough to withstand the onslaughts of superior forces. And so he yields. He bends his head gracefully with many loud protests. And he has survived. The Spaniards came and dominated him for more than 300 years. And when the Spaniards left, the Filipinos still stood, only much richer in experience and culture. The Americans took the place of the Spaniards. They used more subtle means of winning over the Filipinos, who embraced the American way of life more readily than the Spaniards' vague promises of the hereafter. Then the Japanese came like a storm, like a plague of locusts, like a pestilence rude, relentless, and cruel. The Filipino learned to bow his head low to cooperate with the Japanese in their holy mission of establishing the co-prosperity sphere. The Filipino had only hate and contempt for the Japanese, but they learned to smile sweetly at them and to thank them graciously for their benevolence and magnanimity. And now that the Americans have come back and driven away the Japanese, those Filipinos who profited most from cooperating with the Japanese have been loudest in their protestations of innocence. Everything is as if the Japanese had never been in the Philippines. For the Filipino would welcome any kind of life that the gods would offer him. That is why he is contented and happy and at peace. The sad plight of other people of the world is not his. To him, as to that the ancient oriental poet, the past is already a dream and tomorrow is a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and tomorrow is a vision of hope. This may give you the idea that the Filipino is a philosopher. Well, he is. He has not evolved a body of philosophical doctrines, much less has he put them down into a book, like Kant, for example, or Santayana, or Confucius. But he does have philosophical outlook in life. He has a saying that life is like a will. Sometimes it is up, sometimes it is down. The monsoon season comes and he has to go under cover. But then the sun comes out again. The flowers bloom and the birds sing in the trees. You cut off the branches of a tree and while the marks of the ball are still upon it, it begins to shoot forth new branches, branches that are the promise of new color, new fragrance, and new life. Everywhere about him is a lesson in patience and forbearance that he does not have to learn with difficulty. For the Filipino lives in a country on which the God lavished their gifts aplenty. He does not have to worry about tomorrow. 
tomorrow will be only another day, no winter of discontentment, of he loses his possessions. There is the land and there is the sea, with all the riches that one can desire. There is plenty to spar for friends, for neighbors, and for everyone else. No wonder that the Filipino can afford to laugh, for the Filipino is endowed with saving grace of humor. This humor is earthly as befits one who has not indulged in deep contemplation, but it has enabled the Filipino to shrug his shoulders in times of adversity and say to himself, Bahala na. Verily, the Filipino is like the bamboo tree. In its grace, in its ability to adjust itself to the peculiar and inexplicable whims to fate, the bamboo tree is its expressive and symbolic national tree. It will have to be not the molave, nor the nara, but the bamboo. Thank you for watching and for listening. I will see you again. This is your Master Mela, always at your service. Thank you.